about a game. It's a red stick. Listen, don't you dare tell me that isn't the coolest disintegration effect you've ever seen. If you don't agree, you and I can fight two hits. I hit you, you hit the ground. But, you know, beyond the people who want to fight, I guess I should just show you how to make this disintegration effect. It's actually very, very easy, which is the nice thing about it. So, here we have Blender open, assuming everything's recording. Uh, we have Blender open. Here's an example of a model we can disintegrate, and here's what it looks like when we do. It just kind of, you know, separates into fragments and then goes invisible. And this works with any kind of model. It's way better than the build modifier. Just forget everything you know about disintegration. I'm about to teach you all. So let's start with a new Blender scene. This is what you're going to see when you open up Blender. I'm using 2.83, but quite frankly, it doesn't fucking matter. You use whatever you want. Okay. So first of all, you need to pick a model that you want to disintegrate, a cube. It's probably lame, but it's a good first option. So let's say that we're going with the cube. So if this is the model we want to disintegrate, the only prep work we need to do for this is go into edit mode, and then I want you to run the edge split command. So you can hit F3 or spacebar, whatever it is for you, and then type in edge split. I already did since, you know, early bird gets the worm. I'm all about that. I already typed it in edge split. What does that do? It doesn't visually do anything, but what it does is before all the faces were connected, uh, if I move, let me undo that. So now I think I removed the edge split. If I select the vertex, everything's connected. When I run the edge split, it's kind of like now there's two vertices and I can control like one at a time. So, you know, I can pull the faces individually, but either way, run an edge split. This is important because now the faces can detach. Cool. Shading workspace. We're, we're making good progress here. We're almost done actually. Let's get back to it. Okay, so you ran, you ran edge split. Now all our disintegration stuff is gonna happen within the material, which is a weird way to do it. Most people, what they do, what they do is they add something like a build modifier. It's just like the lamest thing you can do. Look at this. Ew, ew, ew. Don't, don't, use, don't use that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into rendered mode and you can keep whatever you have here. If it's a principled BSDF, that's fine. You can make your own custom material. All I want you to do is add a vector displacement. That's right. I added vector rotate. I want you to add vector displacement. Try to follow my instructions, unlike me. Connect that to displacement. I know this is a very confusing node for people, but luckily I'm gonna tell you that you don't need to think about it. It's not a big deal. All we need to do is add in texture coordinates and use pretty much any of these. I find that generated gives a cool result. Normal gives a cool result, but you can experiment. So I just connect one of these, okay. And now we basically have the whole setup for controlling this. But of course, you see nothing is happening. Maybe it looks a bit different in shading. Uh, but that's because right now, while we do have vector displacement, it's not doing anything because our material doesn't actually have displacement enabled. How do we do that? We go to the material settings for this material. Material settings, you go to, uh, not here, here. Where, where is it? You go to... I'm blanking out hard. Oh yes, you need to go to cycles first. This is a cycles only effect, don't forget that. Switch to cycles, cause cycles is the one that has displacement, cause EV still doesn't, and I don't know if it ever will. Then go to the material settings, then go to settings, and now you have displacement, which right now is set to bump only, which is which sucks, don't, don't do this. Either have displacement only or displacement and bump. Anything with the word displacement. And you can see already we're getting something cool. The scale controls you know, the size of this effect. When it's zero, everything's connected. And when it's, you know, something else, it blows apart. So again, why did we have edge split? Because when you use a cube, a normal cube without edge split, it kind of deforms everything together, which is a cool effect in its own right, but it's not what we want. So make sure to run a edge split on this. Okay, cool. So now we have this thing that we can make further and further apart or closer together, whatever. But it's not, uh, we need the pieces to fade away. How do we do this? Well, you'd imagine that you just play around with the transparency. If you have an alpha of one, you see everything. Alpha of zero, you see nothing, right? Obvious, obvious. So what do we do? Value node. We're gonna use this value node to control the scale, how much of this effect is working, and then also the alpha. But of course we have a bit of an inversion problem. If it's zero, then this, the vector displacement is zero, which is what we want, the cube's connected, but we don't see anything because alpha is zero, it's completely transparent. So we want when this is zero, we want alpha to be one and vice versa. How do we do this? Simple, math node, subtract. We're gonna take one, whoops, we're gonna take one, not two, but one, and subtract this. Meaning when this is zero, we get one minus zero, which is one, so alpha is one, this is zero. And when it's one, um, this has a, the effect is happening, the fragments are shattering, so we have one. 
And then over here, we have one minus one is zero. So the alpha is zero, meaning it's gone. So that's what it looks like, you can see. It gets more and more transparent as the effect goes on. And let's do this with a more interesting model. So monkey, enable your material. Again, why is this looking weird? Tell me, Dora fans, what, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with it is edge split. Everything's connected. So edit mode, run your edge split, and now everything's nice and fragmented. So here's what it looks like with a monkey. You just, it's super cool. It's kind of like the wind just took the fragments and woo. And again, um, you have a lot of options here. You can even use a geometry node for even more options. But um, you can see, so generated is the coolest looking one. So there's generated. You could try something like normal coordinates to get a different looking effect. And you know, it's of course uh, calculating based on those texture coordinates is it's doing different types of things. Some of these will give identical effects, but you can you can really just play around with these and get some really weird ones. I like generated some stick with it, which apparently is very similar to object in this sense. Okay, so now we have this. Looks pretty good, but I don't like the fact that it all kind of fades away at the same time. Kind of looks lame. We want some variation. Now, normally variation is a hard thing to do, but luckily for us, we have a node. It's called the geometry node, and it has something called random per island, which gives us a different value between zero and one per island. And you might be thinking, okay, I thought it's per island, not per face. Here, here we have a different value every face. That's true. But since we ran an edge split, which is something we needed to do anyways, they became separated from each other, right? So these things are no longer connected. We ran an edge split and now they're considered islands. So it kind of works for us very, very well. If we instead added a monkey and never ran an edge split, this um, random, this random per island just gives a single color for each island. So this, the eye and the eye, which sucks. But well, what we have here is, you know, it works in our favor is what I'm trying to say. Okay, cool. So if we have variation, we can use this variation to change the whole transparency thing. So here's what I recommend. Maybe not the best way, but a good way to do this is we're gonna duplicate shift D, not there, shift D, and we're gonna set this math node to add. So we're gonna add our value, whatever it is, we're gonna add the random per island. So right now when it's zero, everything has its you know random per island value. And now one thing you need to consider, since this is a value of zero to one per island, right? It's gonna be something different for each one. Uh, the maximum value this addition can be, let's say it's set to one, is this is equal to two because we have one plus the maximum value could be one, so two. Meaning that we need to subtract two minus uh, this thing to ensure that everything ends up transparent at least uh, not so that it doesn't happen too quickly. And we can test this theory out, let's see. Okay. So right now we have it set to zero, meaning that, you know, it just kind of looks normal and we increase, we increase, and you can see some stuff starting to go transparent, some faster than others. And this is where the variation comes in. And then eventually once you go high enough, it get, I guess once you go above two, it guarantees it. So I guess even if we went to one, it would work, but everything kind of happens sooner. So this is kind of like your, this value kind of represents when, when, when's the threshold, the cutoff, when does the explosion thing end? So when we have one, kind of happens pretty quickly with nice variation. Maybe I should keep it at one instead of two. Uh, if we were to set it to 1.5, this is a more longer lasting thing, etc. I'm gonna keep it at one. I don't know what I was talking about before. Okay, so let's say you're happy with this. What do you do? You go to timeline, you're gonna hit keyframe, that's I, uh, when you're here, or you could right click and you know add keyframe uh, manually. But I'm gonna hit I, go to frame 60 or something, set it to not one, I guess two one. Yeah, let's set it to one keyframe. Again, one is the maximum, is the first value you have where you guarantee that everything's gonna be transparent uh, for mathematical reasons. But you add another keyframe, meaning now you have two keyframes, you have the 60, Frame 60, you have it completed, and frame zero, you have it not completed. So when you play it, it does the thing. If you don't like the interpolation, what do you do? You just uh, T, linear. And I guess one thing to note is technically we do have the issue of in the beginning, some stuff's gonna be kind of transparent, which I guess is the reason I was talking about too. If you're fine with this, you're fine with this. Otherwise, set it to two for the reason I explained before, which means now, for frame 60, we need to make it much larger to two to guarantee everything's gone. So this way, yes, it takes longer, but 
you guarantee everything's completely opaque to begin with. And you still have that variation. But if you're like, okay, we, we want that whole transparency, but the explosion's going a bit too far. So I want this whole, it takes time for this transparency to happen, but during that time, there's too much separation that goes on. Easy fix, what do you do? You add another math node, this time to the vector displacement chain. And let's say that we divide by two, meaning everything's now gonna be half as slow. Half as fast, twice as slow, really. If we were to divide by 10, you'll see what really happens. Now you're getting to some barely any motion and it still does this. And this is a cool effect in its own right, but I'm gonna keep it at two. Okay, so what's cool about this effect? It's cool because, let me get me on the main screen. It's cool because everything happens in the material. There's no build modifier, there's nothing like this. Meaning any object, as long as you run your edge split, you can just throw on this material and it will do the thing. It's procedural, you can control it. But there is one thing that is much cooler that I haven't mentioned. What is this dependent on? This effect is dependent on, whoops, it's dependent on your faces, right? Obviously, it's separating those faces and distributing them. Meaning if we were to like subdivide this thing, so subdivide and again run an edge split if that doesn't carry over. So now we have even more faces. You can have more and more fragments. Let's subdivide again and again. Make sure to run your edge split. Now it's getting really slow, but you can get it to look kind of like dust and some of these clump together in a cool way. Of course, this is all dependent on your coordinate system. So different kinds of things will happen for different coordinate systems. So. And if you want to, you can even manipulate some of these texture coordinates before they even reach the vector displacement. And by the way, something very important that I guess I didn't mention because it's not that important because it's there by default. The reason this looks super weird is because we have this set to tangent space. Use something like object space. It's not going to do any weird stuff. It's just going to make the model bigger and then kind of the pieces are, gonna, I don't know. It's not as cool as tangent space because now we're dealing with tangent vectors by vectors, things that you wouldn't, uh, normally be used to. So let me just show you one more thing, which is really just <laughs> me disintegrating more objects. So again, why is this not going to work? Because we need edge split. Don't forget. So this is what it looks like with a torus using uh, generated coordinates. This is what it looks like with a cone. This one I expect to look weird because we got some big faces going on here. So let's see. Yeah, you get some very strange effects and you can always subdivide more if you want a different kind of thing going on. But there you go. Dare I say the coolest disintegration effect for its skill level that I've found in Blender. Forget the build modifier, forget particles. Particles are cooler, but it's a lot of setup. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something about materials, vector displacement, edge split, something. If you enjoy these tutorials and want to support this channel, how do you do it? You do it via Patreon. Patreon gives you not only that good feeling of, you know, oh, I want to help this guy. <laughs> it also gives you behind the scenes. It gives you, in some cases, early access. It gives you, in some cases, private tutorials for the video course tier, um, Discord access, behind the scenes, all this kind of stuff. So if you also want some benefits, those exist. Thank you for watching this tutorial, and I will see you on the next one.